Okay, I'll just do my official welcome to Eating for Health. And let's see, today we have Barbara and Chris and Fatima and Melissa. Okay, so what we're making today is, um, well, lots of stuff. But we'll start with polenta, which is a form of yellow grits. And we've already talked about some of the things that we did in the last class, but we're going to review those a little bit again. And uh, along with the grits, well, it won't take us very long to, to cook the grits. Most people know how to cook grits, just, you know, salted water and uh, cook until done, follow directions on the box. But we're going to add to that uh, mushrooms and uh, with a little bit of a tomato sauce with some onions and garlic, and that's going to be our little seasoning that's going to go on top of these grits. Okay, so let me give this grits a stir so I can see where we are. You're not doing too bad. And we've got our pan ready here, which has already been um, oiled so that we can put the polenta in here. We, after we put it in, we'll put this in the refrigerator and let it cool. So we're waiting to get that done. In the meantime, we wash the mushrooms. And here they are. These are the um, baby uh, portobellas. Yeah. So they're pretty tasty and um, they're good and chewy so it makes it easy to um, uh, sometimes as a meat substitute because they, they have that nice chewy texture and people tend to like that. So what I'll do is I'll cut them up a little bit and cut up the tomatoes and while we're cutting we'll be talking about um, some of the things that we did last time because one of the most important things is to talk about um, carbohydrates being the new fat. Uh -huh. So um, let me just get some equipment over here and we can talk and work at the same time. Okay. So we'll just um, cut away a little part of this portobello that we don't need on the bottom. But the others we're just going to slice, slice up in a traditional fashion. And um, okay, so the main thing that we were trying to say is that um, people didn't eat a lot of sugar in the early 1900s. Okay, and can anybody say why you think they didn't? I don't think it was a hot, you know, commodity. Yeah, it, first of all, it's super expensive. I mean, people yeah. just did not have the money for it. And so they couldn't afford it, and so, you know, they ate what they could grow on the farm, and this was, this was a manufactured product, and people just got it when they could afford it, and they used a little bit, unless it was a special occasion. So people just didn't eat that much, and they ate fruits and vegetables because they grew them. But gradually we became more modern, and the price of sugar kept going down, and finally, by about 1966, the, um, they discovered... Uh, fructose, some people call it fructose, and they made it from corn, and it's cheaper than sugar. So since it's cheaper than sugar, everybody who's making processed foods is using it. So they put in everything, ketchup, donuts, all the cupcakes, all the cookies, everything. So you got to read your labels. It's so important because you'll see that that corn is on it. If you're eating that, what's the problem with it? Well, <laughs> first of all, fructose is different from glucose. In Mother Nature, the fruit has fructose and it has glucose, but one is an antidote for the other, so it cancels it out, so you're okay. But if you're eating straight fructose, then when it's time for the liver to process it, the liver processes it equivalent to, to drinking liquor. It's the same. So when you're eating that stuff, let's just say you know, you're out somewhere and somebody's got some really might looking sweet stuff. And you, either, and you don't know what the ingredients are, you didn't take time to read it, and they have uh, corn, uh, high corn uh, fructose in there, your body will process it the same. And the difference, the only difference in terms of the way your body sees it is that you didn't get the buzz. Okay?